Welcome to the Zala Center for Excellence. Today we're going to show how our 6932 system is interchangeable with our competitor's configuration using our new LPS display. We're going to start off with our competitor's pump already installed in our display to simulate what you would see in the field. First, we are going to make sure the circuit breaker is turned on and that the flag handle is in the up position over the gooseneck discharge fitting, which indicates the valve is open. Now that we have shown everything installed properly, we will start adding water to the system. As water is added into the basin, the water level will rise, activating the pressure switch, allowing the pump to run. We will open and close the ball valve to show on the pressure gauge that the pump is running. To show their high water alarm system works, we will add water to the basin, but we'll have the power turned off to the pump to prevent the pressure switch from engaging. With the alarm activated, we'll silence the audible alarm and turn the pump power back on to evacuate the water from the basin. Now that we have shown that our competitor's pump does work in our LPS display, we're going to show the basic steps needed to replace the pump with our 6932 system. First, we'll want to turn off the circuit breaker to cut power to the pump. Be sure to follow local code for lockout tagout procedures. Next, we will close the discharge valve by pushing the flag handle down, releasing the pump. Now we're going to connect the lifting rope to our hoist to remove the pump. You may need to give the pump a little shake to help disconnect the gooseneck from the discharge flange. Finally, we will disconnect the EQD. This step is saved for last to be sure the EQD doesn't fall into the basin during the removal process. Before installing our 6932, you want to adjust the gooseneck discharge and tighten the sealing nut. This should measure 12 and 3 8 inch from the top of the pump cover to the top of your gooseneck fitting. Once this setting is made, you will want to install to be sure the cover is sitting flat and the gooseneck discharge is secured in the discharge flange. If not, making small adjustments with the sealing nut will be needed. On our 6932 cover mounted system, it is recommended to remove the pump legs to prevent the risk of any rags getting tangled around the legs. To do so, we will use a half inch socket to remove four nuts and washers, leaving the bolts in place. Once the nuts, washers, and legs are removed, we will add the washers and nuts back onto the bolts. These are there to secure the pump housing to the adapter housing. Tighten the nuts till they are snug against the pump housing. Now that we have checked that the pump sits perfect in the system and the legs have been removed, it is time to set the pump into the basin. You will want to add grease to the O-rings to ensure the discharge slides into place easier. First, Plug in the EQD on the power cord to the EQD that is connected to the control panel from the basin. Be sure that both EQD plugs are dry before connecting. 
As you can see here, the EQD coming from the panel is a rectangular plug and the pump has a round plug. There are a couple ways around this. The first being sure that you know exactly what style EQD you have when ordering your pump. Zoller offers our 6932 units in both round and rectangular EQDs. There are other options if this doesn't happen. The first is using our adapter cord that will use a female round EQD and a male rectangular EQD to adapt the pump cord to the panel. The other method is changing out the EQD plug itself. Please refer to our EQD plug video for instructions on how to make this change. For this exercise, we are going to use our adapter cord. In the EQD, there is only one way to plug these into each other. This allows for the terminals to line up properly for proper pump operation. Now we are going to lower the pump into our basin. Once the gooseneck discharge fitting is in the discharge flange, move the flag handle up to open the valve. At this point you want to check for any leaks that might occur around the O-rings before operating your pump. As we add water into the basin, the water level will rise, activating the on-off float switch, allowing the pump to run. We're going to turn off the breaker in the panel to bypass the on-off float, simulating a switch failure. As the water level rises, the high water alarm will activate and will also act as our redundant on-float switch. This will keep the pump on until either the redundant switch drops out or the on-off switch drops out if it re-engages. To remove the 6932, you will want to cut power at the breaker. Open the flag handle to close the valve, then remove the pump from the system just like our competitors. In addition to the cover mounted system, we offer a freestanding unit that functions the same way as the cover mounted system. One of the benefits with the freestanding unit is the lower price point since you no longer have a cover on the system. The other benefit is if you are needing to do a maintenance check on your system, the freestanding unit does not need to be removed. Since there is no longer a cover blocking your view between the wet well and dry well, you can visually check or spray down your system with a water hose without the hassle of removing your pump. Now that we've showed you how easy it is to plug and play our 6932 system into our competitor system, we're now going to show you that if we can swap out their control panel if for some reason their panel fails in the field. To show these panels are interchangeable, we're going to connect our competitor's pump to our LPS panel. As the water level rises, the pressure switch is activated, turning the pump on. We'll actuate the ball valve, changing the head pressures to show it is working. We are now going to add water again and keep the power off to allow the high water alarm to activate. Now let's connect our freestanding 6932 system to our LPS panel. We will connect the pump to the system as we have done previously. As we add water, the on-off switch activates the pump as seen on the pressure switch while we actuate the ball valve. We're going to turn off the circuit breaker to simulate a switch failure. Once the water level activates the high water alarm switch, we'll turn the circuit breaker back on, activating the high water switch that will run the pump like it does in our competitor's panel. For additional information about our LPS panel, please see our LPS panel features video.
Thank you for taking time out of your day to learn how you can replace our competitor system with our 6932 system. If you need any other questions or need help sizing a system, please contact our product support department at 1-800-928-7867.